All right, let's get into it. So I have Nina with me today from Mississippi, and we are going to do a quick little interview about her time in the Road to Remission program. So thank you so much for coming on, Nina. I do appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so why don't you start off by talking a little bit about your journey before you met me and ended up joining the Road to Remission program? Oh, okay. So I was diagnosed in 2007, but, you know, of course I had symptoms long before that, you know, I was treated for UTIs and, and that kind of thing. And, and finally, uh, a nurse at one of my doctor's offices said, said, I think you have interstitial cystitis. So she's the one that really, um, you know, found it. And um, she told the doctor and he referred me to a urogynecologist. And that's when I got the diagnosis. So okay. thank you Lord for her, you know. And, um, but, you know, and they gave me Elmeron, Amitriptyline, um, um, the urogesic blue, you know, the, the typical things and, and, um, um, bladder installations. So that's where I was started on. Okay. First line treatment. Uh, I know it's ridiculous yeah. how doctors start with those things. First line treatment. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and, and then I came back like every week for five weeks for the installations, you know, and, um, of course they did the testing, um, the, what the urodynamic testing to, mm -hmm. to see my bladder function and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And they handed me the diet, <laughs> the icy diet list. Yep. Yeah. And, and it had, back then i don't know what it has now but back then it had like vanilla milkshake french fries you know yeah things that are processed <laughs> and have a lot of added sugars in them a ton of foods with it so i thought oh, well, hey you know milkshakes and french fries this is i can do that you know but um really I didn't have any instructions on how to do an elimination diet and I was left to my own resources. So, um, for all these years, I've just been trying to figure this thing out because I'm not getting education from the medical profession. Right. And you were diagnosed in 2007, you said, so, right? 15, no, 15 years ago. Yeah. So I've just been out, you know, lost. Mm -hmm. and hurting <laughs> yeah absolutely can you kind of go through what your symptoms look like and you know how it was affecting your life the past few years mm -hmm. um I have pain um like sometimes not all the time but sometimes when I after I go not before I go to the bathroom the burning but the burning after just this severe burning after going to the bathroom, just on fire, you know, just one minute I'm fine. I go to the bathroom and urinate and then it's like an eight to a 10 pain. It's horrible. Um, and um, the pain is, is usually a burning pain and it, it can be like around the, mostly it's in, around the urethra area. Um, the perineum and right at the entrance of mm -hmm. the vagina that that also and um and then I also have like the pins and needles you know that shoots down my leg mm -hmm. it, it when I sit too long okay or if I'm driving or a long distance every time I'm driving a long distance um, my son lives um, in North Mississippi and it's about a two and a half hour drive and every time I drive up there 
it it starts you know that pain traveling down the pins and needles yeah mm-hmm. it's not comfortable no. mm-hmm. so it gets in the way or it got in the way of you um, seeing your son um are there other ways that your symptoms were getting in the way of living the life that you wanted oh absolutely it just in every way i kept you know forging ahead and trying to do things but the quality i just didn't feel good and you know when i was pretty cranky and 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 irritable um because i didn't feel good and i don't know being a um a a southern woman my age i'm 60 we don't show pain and we don't show weakness Mm -hmm. and we just we don't complain everything is fine even when it's you know we're hurting a a number 10 you know you don't want anybody to know that you're not yeah feeling well you have a good poker face yeah, so I've basically been trying to just fake my way through it, but I've been miserable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and you're a nurse, so I'm sure that going to work is uncomfortable. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it, it makes work difficult. Um, and it's, you know, it was getting, um, as I've turned 60, the work, it was getting more and more difficult to work in this. I just, I, I'm tired of the pain and I just am tired of fighting this pain, Mm -hmm. you know, trying to fight it and work 12 hour shifts. Right. And throw in the stress of a pandemic. I know that that was so much, so hard on nurses and hospital workers. Yeah. And, and there, there's this thing called joint commission mm-hmm. that comes and inspects the hospitals and charges us huge fines if they find you something, you know, anyway. Um, they have this big thing that nurses cannot have water at the nurse's station. So here I am, deprived of water, you know, for I've been nursing for 28 years. <laughs> so yeah, I don't get to go to the bathroom. I don't get to drink water. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like you're taking care of other people and they're not letting you take care of yourself. Right. Yeah. Right. But we can be, we're, we're easily replaceable. So, but anyway, that's another story. <laughs> but um, I drink my water now at the nurse's station. Yes. I love I that. drink, Kelly, I drink my water. <laughs> I love it. I have that. it. It's yeah. there. Yes, Nina, I love it. So <laughs> what made you take the jump to joining the Road to Remission program? This that just being so tired of fighting this pain every day. Mm-hmm. And it just doesn't seem like I'm getting anywhere with my practitioners. Mm-hmm. They're just doing the same thing. You know, the meds and the installations and they just didn't really seem to have anything um and my husband also bless him he's been so encouraging he you know he seek help also outside of my state to try to find um you know some relief from this horrible you know him i think him watching me in pain um it's been really hard because he's been really the only one that's seen me in, in pain. Mm-hmm. Actually, seen it. Yeah, you don't have to hide it at home, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I did for a long time, but I couldn't anymore. Mm-hmm. I was just tired. Mm-hmm. Just... Yeah. Yeah. So you joined the program. Um, you are now in your third month. So what have you. What have you learned during the program? Oh my goodness. It's like I was telling you, I, I'm so happy that I have learned more in the past two months 
that than I've learned in 15 years. And my practitioners are good. I don't want to say anything bad about them because they are good. They're not condescending. I think they're just doing the best that they, you know, can do right now. But, um, yeah, I've just, uh, you have, um, your courses, um, you know, your lectures that you give are great. Um, very informative. And the books that you recommend. Well, I have, you know, I haven't seen those books in 15 years. I'm so grateful to have them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the web websites, Facebook groups, Instagram groups. Yeah. Yeah. So you really enjoyed the education portion, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And so now you're in your testing phase of your elimination diet. So tell me how the first few weeks of testing went. Went, went well. Um, you know, you give us the, uh, the uh, el testing phase prep, you know, so we're able, we have a, a few days or a week to, to get ready for testing. And then you have the testing lecture and it's very um you know to the point and easy to follow um and um yeah it's, it's good so it went fine i you know tomato was the first thing i did i was telling you which is amazing i, I just wanted to jump right in there because um you know having a my maiden name is Allegresa, so you don't get more Italian than that. Yeah. I mean, even our even when we had like taco night at our house, it was Italian tacos. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's great! So and have like yeah. So tomatoes was was a biggie for me, and yeah. So can you eat tomatoes in? any portion or does it have to be in moderation or does it not matter i th i think i can eat in any any portion now great i, I tried it on a gluten-free pizza okay did, did okay yeah um i've tried um oh I've, I've tried it several different ways yeah cool so what was after tomatoes um the coffee <clears throat> mm -hmm. <clears throat> which was a that was my second thing that I I, I just didn't want to live without mm -hmm. and what kind of coffee was it <clears throat> it was it's called simpatico mm -hmm. Sim simpatico and I ordered it on, online um I haven't seen it for sale in any of our local stores and um it's low acid right and I believe it's organic mm-hmm without the pesticides okay great and do you yeah. consistently drink that now every, i drink one one cup every day i haven't tried more than one cup just just one cup okay mm -hmm. that's awesome is there mm -hmm. anything else that you've tested so far that has been successful outside of those things mm -hmm. um the next thing i did was green tea okay because I, I I love my tea, my afternoon tea, and I didn't want to give that up. Right. And I I enjoyed my afternoon tea time. So um, my little green tea with jasmine. So, yeah, nice. and I, I I've done very I've done well. I've had one cup, and I haven't tried to have more than that. Okay. And I, I, it's been okay. Good. And have you tried anything like chocolate or citrus or soy? Any of those other common triggers? No, not yet. Chocolate is the next one I'm going to try. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Exciting stuff. I love that. Have you found anything yet that you can't tolerate? No. Wow. That's amazing. 
isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm finding through working with people with IC that not everyone is food sensitive. And, you know, the only way you're going to learn that is by doing an elimination diet. Because what if you went on the rest of your life afraid of all of these foods and never actually tested? You may not ever enjoy those things again. So it's great that you took that, that step and did the elimination diet. I mean, you're still in it, but I think that, you know, I've seen so much growth and progress in you that it's just fantastic to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. I'm so grateful for it. And yeah, the elimination diet and, you know, the way that you've done it in the testing phase is, you know, it's every bit worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So to have, yeah, a actual registered dietitian <laughs> guiding us, you know, is that specializes in I C. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. know. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. We need more dietitians that do this, but that's a story for another time. Um so what would you say was your favorite part of the road to remission program um hmm my favorite um i don't like writing so it wasn't that <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible at tracking you know that's okay um, yeah i think I, I really enjoyed the um you know the well i call them lectures the classes. Yeah. Classes, the yeah. courses. Anything in uh, specific, any specific class? Yeah, I love this, the um, the stress management and mental health. Mm-hmm. I love that. And I love um, the, um, which, what would, the, how. How the pelvic pain, pain hurts. Pain. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think Absolutely. that one's really, really good and. That one was based off of a book that I loved. So I'm glad that you also found that to be informative. Um, So have you learned about triggers that you have outside of food? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. Um, Tight clothing. Mm -hmm. And um, I've learned, you know, it constricts the muscles in our stomach, which pull on our bladder I can't describe exactly how but it does and it makes it hard yeah it affects your pelvic floor yeah um so my my little my cute little tight fitting leggings no more (laughs) (laughs) I put them in the back of the closet for now but I found some cute you know joggers are in style right now so they are in style right now that's for sure And swim shorts are in style. So, you know, I'll be able to do that um, this summer. And I'm interested to see if the chlorine bothers me. Mm -hmm. Our pool is chlorinated. So, um, but but the tight clothing and the stress, is it? Stress, yep. Stress is huge. So that's why the mental health um, and the stress management courses help so much. Yeah, Yeah. that's great. And you started pelvic floor physical therapy too. How has that been going? Great. Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, I found out that most of my triggers are, it's the, or rather I have the myofascial subtype. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I remember we were talking on our discovery call and your symptoms when you described them to me sounded exactly like my symptoms so i was like have you tried pelvic floor pt before and you said no and i was like that is something that i really believe could help you so i'm really glad that you you know Mm -hmm. listened to that and went and are really feeling relief Mm -hmm. i've been in a flare walking into because I work nights, and so I schedule my appointments, you know, for 8 in the morning, 
so I can go to physical therapy, then go home and go to bed. That's you perfect. Know? So I have been in a flare, you know, at the very beginning of physical therapy there. Um, you know, I would be in, in a bad flare at work all night and then go to physical therapy and and it would be relieved by by her releasing those um trigger points Mm -hmm. that's amazing isn't that amazing yes i mean i would just be laying there and say and and be in this number eight pain and and then just say pain is down to a three yeah it's like magic (laughs) it really is you know when you're in that much pain it's like the pain (laughs) <laughs> relief yeah yeah um so what does your life look like now uh i have so much more i just i feel empowered right now my life is empowered it's it's so much more positive um because i'm not walking around in pain constantly you know um and and I don't freak out when a flare starts. I think I was, when a flare started and I, w- I would freak out and the stress from that made the muscles tense and, and all that stuff that happens when you get stressed. And, um, and it would make it last longer and hurt worse. Mm-hmm. So now I'm able to, to, as soon as the flare starts, I'm able to pull out my little flare busting recipe and just start going down the line, drink the baking soda. You know, I take a baclofen, the uric bale, um, and, you know, just drink the um, marshmallow root tea. Mm -hmm. And I just start doing, doing it all. The, the stretches, and the exercises that the physical therapist recommends and um the flares are lasting a a few hours instead of days to a month or longer and the intensity of the pain has gone from eight to ten to a three to four so crazy yeah and and the i'm having my flares now are down to like 10 to 11 days apart. Really good. And I can live with that. Yeah. It, you know, it'd be great if it, if it was even less, but hey, with the pain being a three, that I can go on with life. And this you is know, only my- two months into this. Who knows where the next few weeks yeah. can take you, you know? It's very hopeful. I didn't tell you that... My son is getting, my oldest son, he's 35, he's getting married, um, no, he's 36 now, he just turned, like, he's getting married next week, and so we're going, um, they're having their wedding reception up in um, Oxford, Mississippi, and um, he went to Ole Miss and never came home, he just stayed mm-hmm. when he went home, so... I'm going to be driving up there. So, I'm, you know, we'll see how I do. Yeah. There'll be, you know, wedding food and travel. Do you feel more confident, though, this time around? I do. Yeah. I, oh, oh, yeah, definitely. You can focus more on enjoying the event rather than stressing about it. Yeah, Callie, I'm actually excited. Yay. You no. Know? been a long time since I've been excited about anything you know yeah (laughs) that's amazing Nina I love it pretty depressing when you've been in pain for 15 years you know right oh man well it's a whole new new life that you can have now and and start really enjoying the things that you want to enjoy yeah yeah so last question what advice would you have for someone who's on the fence about joining the Road to Remission program? Um, I would 
say that um, you, I can't say, you know, just jump on in and do it, but I think it's worth every penny. I mean, our health is worth it. And the information is so valuable. Um, Callie gives us with her road to remission, she gives us more than, than we would get, um, you know, from our practitioners. Um, yeah, I guess I'd say just jump and, you know, and do it. It's worth it. Take the jump. Yeah. 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 You can get your life back just like you did. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Thank you, Callie, for what you do. It's just, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's really good. Yeah. Um, when I heard your podcast with um, Jill, and she's my age, and you know, and I and she said she's sixty. I think she said she was sixty, one sixty, and she said I'm sixty, but I feel like I'm in my twenties. Yeah, you know, and that's how I feel. I don't feel six. I feel. You know, like you, I just don't look like you yeah. <laughs> anymore. But I still feel in my twenties. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I the the interviews like this and just feedback just make it all worth it. I think it really is amazing to hear. You know how this can change people's lives and just give them their happiness back. Yeah, yeah. And another thing, um, I haven't been able to jump in on the um, on the call, group calls, and I've missed that. Um, I'm because working nights, right? You know, I'm driving to work and getting ready for work and driving to work during that time. But I'm gonna try to. I've got to try to jump on them these yeah, last few weeks. We would love to missed, have you. I have really missed out. Um. I've been watching them, you know, the replays. Yeah. And oh my goodness, you learn so much from oh, yes, from each other. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I ordered some of that. Um oh goodness. I ordered it today. It was um some C B D bath salts and C B D um cream mm -hmm. um suppositories. And so I, I, I can't remember the, what was the name of that. I can't remember. Was it oh. from? Um, was it the Firecrotch Berry? Or was mm, it like it was a on, company? It was one of the girls on your group call. Yeah. Um. I think I know what you're talking about, but I can't remember what it was specifically. I went on there and ordered it. Um. I know I'll have the receipt, but, um, anyway, yeah. I can't believe I've already forgotten. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you turn 60. Right. <laughs> you know, you forget what happened five minutes ago, uh, but you still feel like you're 25. Right. <laughs> well, do you have anything else that you wanted to add, Nina, before we wrap this up? Um, no, I don't. Awesome. Think so. Yeah, no, well, I, I do so appreciate you doing this interview with me. I think it will help so many people, you know, just, just get, have that hope, you know, holding out for that, that better life or, you know, just feeling an ounce of relief is, it just makes a world of difference. Mm, absolutely. And that we can live a, a quality life with a chronic illness we're not doomed to just you know having a flare and going to bed mm -hmm. we, yeah. we do have some power over our bladders yes we do we really, <laughs> we really do we can empower ourselves over those bladders perfect yeah oh my gosh well thank you again nina um looking forward to seeing everything that you can accomplish in the next few weeks. Thank you.